And I'd say the reason for even this whole trip has just been like just growing as people and Yeah, everything's just a bit run down here in a way. Like this is kind of where we're at. In particular, some places are nicer, but like this is kind of one of their gyms. So. Love the rebar grates though. Everything's rebar out here. <laughs> All right, so we are in Thailand right now and we are going to film a podcast in just a second but we have um, there's this horse yeah the owner he just he can't afford to feed the horse so every day he drops off this horse and it just sits right in this little hostel here and the uh, people that stay in the hostel and the people that run the hostel they all just feed it throughout the day whatever they can yeah whatever they can afford and whatever, whoever donates so we um, bought some carrots and we're going to Bring him in. <laughs> we did it. <sighs> Might as well sit him right next to us now. <laughs> All right. Like we said, there is a, just a horse that kind of just roams around here and it's kind of crazy. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but no, we really wanted to just sit down and explain our experiences so far in Thailand and um, just get it back to friends and family and everyone back home because it's been such a crazy experience for us, so out of the norm that um, you know two Midwest kids just traveling across the world is kind of abnormal. Um, and we just kind of wanted to talk about it and explain some of the uh, things we've been through, the ups and downs, living in hostels, the types of food, the accessibility, um, and really like just the poverty around. Um, it's just really revolved a, a perspective shift for us in regards to different areas of the world and, and what other people have to go through um, and, and how they have to to live their day-to-day -day lives. So a few things, we, we wanna start a podcast. We wanna start kind of a show podcast. So I'm gonna be putting in some clips here and there of um, things in Bangkok and um, just crazy traffic and um, just different things and, uh, that you don't see day-to-day -day and just kind of express our um, story and express um, you know, the things we've been through in the past months since being here. We want to bring a lot of the, the healthy habits that we've accrued, a lot of the positive experiences, the people we've met. I mean, we've met people from England, Ireland, mm. Finland, Australia, Canada, and, and we could probably count on one hand how many Americans we've met. And that's, you know, allowed for its own battle, trying to connect with other people and, um, trying to explain where you're from, but nobody knows where Wisconsin <laughs> is in America. They know where, uh, you know, California or New York is. Um, so it's, it's been a really eye-opening experience. And um, yeah, we just kind of want to talk about it because it's so abnormal and so kind of out of the blue. And we both had, you know, I had been trying to plan this trip to do on my own and um, for my own reason and to, you know, I, initially coming out here was like how beautiful it was and how, you know, the, the terrain and, and thinking of photography and filmmaking and, and wanting to lean into that and also pursue that um, in more of a passion way. Um, but also I think what really came out of it was like the eye-opening culture shock experience of being in a third world country where, you know, they have, you know, when you think of um, if, if you're a, a child growing up in this environment versus America or, or, or wherever, um, you know, your parents are, are walking miles to get water or they're, you know, they're scraping by and, and it's, 
it's um, it makes me really grateful and, and for the opportunities that we have back home. So it's like, why not, you know, bring that back, but also like we can like really learn from our experiences here and, and we kind of just want to talk about it and relate it back home and, and kind of lean into this podcast show type thing that we kind of want to pursue um, and just talk because we always just keep it to ourselves, but to just kind of get it out there is something that we have wanted to lean into. So that's kind of what we're, what we're going for. Yeah. But we've noticed a lot of people, you know, come out here to just drink or to, you know, do their own thing or to get away from the job that they hate or, or whatever it may be. Um, but we kind of had things set in stone of, you know, things we wanted to work on and, and, and personal and future goals and um, coming out here for a bit of a break, but also time to work on ourselves and, and to go through some of the, the roller coasters that, that we've done. So um, overall, it's just been such a positive experience. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the reason other people are on such a different journey here, trip here, too, is because it's so much more accessible to people that don't live in America. Like, all of these people here, they have a month and a half off of work every year to just travel. And they say how, how easy it is for flights and stuff here, how cheap it is, obviously. It's not as far as it is for us, but I think that's another reason we came here on a different mission, because this is an incredibly uncommon. Bridge is sturdy. <laughs> There's a like bunch of rice field like terrace type things. I don't really know what, yeah. what the best name for it is, but different. It looks like it's supposed to retain water. The right here is pretty nuts, pretty rocky. Re rebar mats were showing through all the concrete that was peeled up out of the ground. Road here in mopeds. Yeah, thought <laughs> thought we'd get a flat tire, honestly. For people where we're from to take this much time off of work because it's it's kind of the american dream ideology that uh you know you 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 keep grinding at work and you work year round and you get a better job you get a better car a better house and then you have to work more and it's so common it's so common everywhere there and all these people it's 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 so common for them to just travel there's 18 year olds here up to 25 that have been everywhere yeah yeah it's crazy uh talking to different um you know europeans or australians or you know people that don't you know not that they have money to travel they're just doing it because you know one lady i talked to her parents were like just go travel if, if you don't know what you want to do because you're going to learn more through that experience and and you know take it from us <laughs> like like yeah like you're gonna like it gives me goosebumps because the things that we've seen and learned and 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 how people live um their day-to-day -day lives out here and and how welcoming they are for you know people from all over the world to come into their culture and and obviously tourism drives that economy here but also um they're just so happy you know like every every thai person or you know everyone we've met here in the culture you know they don't have much at all but you know they're so happy so why can't we bring you know why can't we be more grateful in a sense um in our day-to-day -day lives or whatever that we're doing if if they can be by you know walking miles to get water or you know like dropping their horse off because they can't afford food for it so they ask for donations you know it's it's just a different world out here it's also you know abided struggles and challenges that we've had to figure out because we've never done anything like this before like like Dalton said it's so uncommon for Americans to really widen their horizons outside of America um, and and to talk to people from other countries and hear their perspective on on the American way and 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 how um, uncommon it is for people from America to travel and do things versus how common it is for them um, it's been just kind of a, a, a crazy experience overall mm -hmm. and um, very eye-opening. And um, to, to take time to, you know, reset after a hard year. You know, we love to work. You know, I think working, working makes me happy, I feel, you know, in the system. You know, working, you know, you know taking day by day, you know, yep. rocking yep. and rolling. And, and we both have been... I'd say grinding for a greater part of the last four to five years. And, and this was something that was kind of calling, you know, to, to spark things up, to, you know, to avoid burnout, 
um, and to also just grab a new perspective and take that back home and, and kind of run with it. So I'd say overall, you know, as far as we are into this, you know, trek and journey so far, we feel the, the healthiest, you know, a different, you know, sense of, of happiness and, and fulfillment and how we want to take on, you know, the next year ahead and, and to continue that path of what we want for our future selves or our goals and, and whatever that may be. I felt that this winter was weighing on me and probably you too more than, more than ever just with the workload we've had. Um, like you said, we've just been grinding, just yeah. grinding, and, 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 and like that's in our blood, you know, that, that's what we've done our whole lives, and we love building things, whether it's a business or building a concrete wall for years or whatever it is, it, it feels good, it feels good to yeah. do that, and all of a sudden, for me personally, my passion towards it and, and my work ethic, I just felt like I could be better, but I was being really hard on myself. I think that's what that's what sparked this trip for me. Is that I need I needed something I needed something way out there, something just to yeah something way different. And you know, if going through winter it's 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 tough, and we wanted to kind of curb that, but also do it you know smartly and on a budget. And and we've successfully done that so far. And we're you know we're excited to get home and, and attack the year, but also like we're so grateful to take time and have the opportunity to do this. Um, but I think it's all about also like having the courage and the will to even do something so crazy that it's, it's really nurtured just our mindset and, and, and where we want to go. So it's, yeah. you know, and the show is kind of something that we want to pursue just for ourselves because we have conversations and we want to, you know, we want to get it out there a bit just because it's, it's fun for us and like this is crazy. So why not like let our friends and family you know live through that and, and share our experiences and um you know go against the grain a bit it's it's yeah. it's worth it it's it's really worth it um back to what you were saying about like kind of getting run dry or um whatever it is back home how how are you feeling going into this trip as you know abnormal as it is for people back home to even do something like this how did you feel you know, leading into after Christmas and, and getting ready for the trip and having that anxiety or angst of this is, you know, really coming up and, and we're actually doing this. And, and for him to, you know, say yes was all of the will that made me say yes 10 times more. Mm -hmm. And and we're so happy to do so. But I to give the audience, what how were you feeling, you know, knowing that you were going to have a 20 hour flight all the way across the world? Yeah. Like next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the way up until that point we left, it felt as if, you know, getting out of bed was hard. It's like, all right, here we go. Let's just try and make it through another winter. Before I said yes to the trip, that's just how I felt. You know, I'm going to make it through another winter. It does never feel like a healthy winter, you know, like, mm -hmm. oh, I killed this winter. I feel great, you know. Right. I've never, I've never really had that. But um, all the way up until about a week before the trip, I was just, I, it seemed hard to get excited because I was just in the same workflow and and mindset and then all of a sudden it was all right it's time to start packing our bags and 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 you know <laughs> all the stuff that we got for it like the backpacks we needed to come here I, it started to feel very real and i didn't even know how to process those feelings i really didn't i, I wish i could describe it better but i mostly just pushed it to the side because i didn't know how i felt about it and then all of a sudden as soon as we got on the plane I felt everything. Everything that it seemed I couldn't process or feel properly, it hit me on the plane and I was like, wow, we're doing it. We're doing it. We're actually doing it. We're going halfway across the world to learn this culture and, and live in this culture and just embrace it. Yeah, and grow. Just em embrace it has been, you know, on the top of the list of what we've had to go through. It's not been, you know, super like lavish or luxurious at all mm -hmm. um it's been a grind it's been challenging and you know i didn't feel yeah you know, i was nervous too like mm -hmm. i i you know like being dropped in a third world country all the way across the world that you don't know barely anything about people back home are like do you know like the language like what's the language out there and like blah blah, blah. and like like yeah kind of mm -hmm. but also like we're just winging it in a sense, like <laughs> yeah. totally winging it. And like, that's, 
that's the truth and I think that's kind of what we've built our friendship on is just kind of doing you know doing random things and being spontaneous and it's been just a growth process and um, it's just been so crazy but yeah to get into it we flew from um, lacrosse to Chicago Chicago to Tokyo Tokyo to Bangkok and that was about 20 hours on a plane um, and also you're 13 hours ahead of back home so it so we were in Bangkok for about three to four days and it is a heavily populated city um, very poor and um, yeah just such a crazy place to start the trip and it kind of ruffled some feathers for us it was really challenging um, we had a really uh, heart to heart conversation about three days in it was like like this is just kind of crazy you know it's incredibly <laughs> stressful it's very tourist directed so as soon as you walk out of your hotel you have these little taxi tuk tuk things just waving you down other other guys girls pulling on your shirt just trying to get you to do this or do this and it, it was stressful and yeah. the language barrier of all of it I mean there's so many factors into just people nudging you you know there's a lot more to that that adds stress as well so we were just just kind of going through it and we just had to figure it out and you know adventure on and carry on and, and figure out you know how we're gonna do this and so we had a, a route planned. we were gonna get into Bangkok go north and do the normal there's a it's kind of a normal backpackers loop where people go hostel to hostel and what a hostel is is you know it can range from um, a 16 bed mixed dorm with you know other random backpackers 40 to 50 year olds mm -hmm. you know adults couples um, just like doing the same thing that that we're doing it's just so much more common in other countries to do this sort of thing and also a lot more accessible when it comes to you know how close you know the country is to you know the UK versus America it's a bit different um, but what a hostel is is you know it's a it's a shared living space basically and you, you have your own your bed and you may have a curtain or a ladder up to your thing and um, those the prices can range anywhere from you know six dollars a night to to twenty five dollars a night depending on on where you're at location based um, and it's you know the beds aren't great and uh, you know some are better than others but you can also get you know like a a private room in a hostel which can be you know 30 bucks a night or whatever it may be um, where you have a little bit more normalcy you can kind of you know unpack your bags comfortably um, leave your stuff laid out do whatever it's it, it takes away that other stress factor because what the seven dollar a night rooms seem to be is just your space is is the width of your bed Typically top bunk is what I've gotten fortunate enough to get. So I get to climb up this tiny ladder into my tiny bed every time and you get a tiny locker to shove your huge backpack in. So it's, it's, not, the, it's not the easiest. And when we started that, it wasn't in Bangkok. We got a nice hotel in Bangkok, but our first one was in Chiang Mai and that was like, it like blew my mind. It was stressful to me. I didn't know how to manage that small of space with all my stuff. So that's kind of like what the seven to ten dollar a night hostels are like. Yeah, and um, starting in Bangkok, it's it's super populated. The first meal I had um, was pad thai, which is a one of the staples in Thailand for cultural food. Um, and I was like, yes, you know, we we got in about two in the morning, trying to find, you know, how how do we get a ride to our hotel from the airport with, you know, these Thai. Uh, taxi drivers that don't speak English um, and so this whole thing has just been just a crazy whirlwind of just figuring it out and so you know there's there's you know Thai people make their their living off of food I'd say mostly like food is so um, derivative here and so um, like how people make their living because that's kind of all they have and and we were kind of ready for that um, but as we kept on and on and on, we realized how much food opportunity that there is here and how much healthy accessibility there is. Um, there's smoothie stands, there's you know, all this healthy food um, and, and at a cheap price. So it's been, 
you know, kind of a blessing in disguise, but also when it comes to food, it's not just Thai food. Um, there's, you know, multiple restaurants or food stands that have just everything that you could think of from international American cuisine, you know, chicken sandwiches to uh, rice and noodles to, to pho to, you know, just all of these, all of these things. Um, so it, you know, we were worried about coming into it when it came to the food, like, I don't know, I'm gonna, you know, I feel like I'm gonna lose a bunch of weight because I'm not gonna love the mm -hmm. food. Um, but as we kind of got into it more, there's, you can get basically anything that you need out here. Yeah, for sure. On an international level, uh, imported steaks from like New Zealand and Australia, of course, those are like your nicer places, but we've been sticking around to like the more culture directed restaurants here and there, I would say. And, uh, you know, like we're on an island too, so this stuff isn't being brought in every day. They, they might Currently go Currently we're on an island. Currently we're on an island, yeah. Our first one, one month into this trip actually. And uh, so they, they catch their fish here, they, they get their fruit and vegetables here, and, that's where, and they go right to these smoothie stands. So that's, I mean, you're, you're getting as fresh of shakes as you can get and stuff like that. And it, I think it really makes a difference too. For like $2. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so we've been like, you know, eating healthy and just like, it's just really improved our direction. And, um, yeah, the, the food out here is, is pretty opening. It's not as scary as, as people make, may make it out to be. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. There's, there's definitely some plates you can get that are a little crazy that just you haven't had before. That's, I think that's mostly what people are scared of because they don't know what it'll do to them. But I've, I've been pretty safe this whole time, I would say. Um, I think one time I've had to take activated charcoal and just to like calm my stomach down a little bit. <laughs> but other than that, like the food's been amazing, so amazing. And I, I wish I would have done more research even before I came here because people like, like people that love food, Meg, um, she was speaking, she was so excited for me about the food here and I, did, I like didn't even know a whole lot about it, like the Thai culture and food. But God, I'm so surprised and so amazed at how actually good it is. Yeah. Learning the, the culture and being kind of immersed into how people live their day-to-day -day lives and kind of going through our own mental you know, barriers and, and strengths and, and weak points, um, I think, it, I mean, it's really helped me a ton. Just like, you know, I've, back home, you're, you're kind of living your day-to-day -day life and you don't really have, you have so many distractions and you don't really have much time to you know, think about what you may want to work on or, or how you want to, you know, how you want to do the next three to five years or, or where you want to go in life. And kind of, you know, this has really allowed us to, to grow a ton um, in just characteristic development and, and where our passions lie and how, how do you feel um, like being this far into the journey versus how you felt before even you know coming yeah no i feel like my ego has just been thrown out the window or broke down maybe and 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 made better um the things that happen like back home just that i would get upset about or frustrated like distracted about because like you said you know we're always we're always trying to self-improve and like what's our next three to five year plan and when you're thinking about those things you might think you're kind of working on yourself and building your craft but in a sense when you come here the stuff that you're allowed to think about and the stuff you're allowed to start breaking down and processing that you didn't have time for back home is the kind of growth that is exponential compared to back home you're building yourself up to get to a point to where you can do this I feel like yeah 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 definitely definitely um, and also like you know back home you know you go to the gym, you do all the, you know, the positive things or the things that you, you know, that whatever works for you. Um, but this is also, you know, immersed us into figuring out what works for us and how, how we move and how we operate and, and um, just the, the energy and, and the people out here has, has allowed us to just think differently um, and without being super hoo-ha and spiritual and whatnot, hone in on some personal skills and, and some personal development um, has just been, you know, incredible mm -hmm. when it comes to how we want to operate and move back home and, and how we, you know, you know, love our friends and family and, and 
it's made me entirely grateful. I, I texted my mom like a few times um, about just, I'm so excited to give you a hug. And, um, and internally it's just, it's just because I'm, I'm so grateful what we have in America. Like we have so much opportunity and to, and to see how people live and, and breathe out here. Um, we are incredibly lucky um, for what we have and and to really embrace that and to carry that back home is something that we we really want to want to do mm -hmm. uh when we were getting ready to leave bangkok we had our little heart to heart and um it was stressful and it was hard and it was every bit of the sh culture shock that we expected to get and more because um, like you said earlier we had friends that had come here and told us about the culture shock and how you're just kind of going to be a walking zombie for your first week because of all the all the stuff that's going on and you'll see it too because Bailey will have videos and pictures but um, after Bangkok we were shook and we went to Chiang Mai which uh, is northern Thailand it's we took a 12-hour a bus yeah overnight to Chiang Mai it's like kind of a mountainous region in a way Mm -hmm. um, but go ahead. And uh, that's where we started seeing the the calmer parts, the more realistic parts of the Thai culture. Um, we started seeing Muay Thai gyms everywhere. Uh, monks were everywhere walking the streets, and the people were incredibly, incredibly wholesome. And I think how that made me feel was like a sense of relief. Like, okay, I can really start to hone in on this and learn on it because I, this, is, this is what's for me. How, I mean, how did you feel when we got to Chiang Mai and we started settling in and feeling better and like, okay, we can do this? Yeah, when we got to Chiang Mai, that was our first hostel experience. And we met you know, some amazing people there. And, but from Bangkok to Chiang Mai, it was just so wholesome. Like the, the people were so nice, the food was great. Um, everyone was just genuinely happy and from a, the American side for you know in tipping in a sense we, you know we would we would tip because you know it made us feel good but the appreciativeness because they don't expect it um, but how much harder they work to serve you mm. um, it, it makes you feel so good to to tip them because they are you know so grateful for that yeah if there's if there's one thing that you will see that is a common thing between everywhere in Thailand is their work ethic and their, their hours that they work. It's not like a nine to five or a seven to five. It's nothing like that. It's, it's typically we've been up for sunsets at six o'clock and seeing uh, street, uh, street food things, just starting to make food, restaurants starting to cook their chicken for the day. And they work until two, three in the morning. So that, that's definitely something that the Thai culture embraces, which I think we have a lot of respect for too, because we work really hard. And we've worked dark to dark and, and more and all of that. So we can, we can see that and respect it. And that's where I feel we just love giving out like these tips. And they, they're so grateful for it. Like we can give out a uh, 20 bot tip, which to put that uh, in perspective, in, in perspective. Uh, bot is the currency here to USD, like 20 cents, 50 cents. Yeah. So 32 bot is a US dollar. Okay. So tipping them out like a 20, 20 bot. I mean, it's not a whole lot to us, but it, when you see the expressions on their faces and how excited they get, it, it makes you feel so good, mm. you know? Yeah, yeah, it's worth it. And, and people wince at it too, especially from people from other cultures that we've met, because um, it's so not normal, but it's, it's, it's the right thing to do, in my opinion, mm -hmm. um, and to give back to people that you know, don't have as much, it's, it just feels, feels right. We had come into this kind of with a uh, a big route. We wanted to hit a bunch of countries, see a bunch of things um, in the time that we had. But as we, you know, started going, it became so hectic and stressful, especially coming with camera gear and, and staying in a hostel with, you know, a bunch of people. And, you know, safety was like a big thing that we were unsure about. But we, um, we have felt incredibly safe here. Like everyone is, you know, so nice. Nobody is like out to get you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the traffic and the chaos in some places is crazy hectic. Um, but I, I've felt very safe this entire time. Yeah, yeah. The Thai people are very, very comforting. Even I would say, in a in a sense, they're all really welcoming. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't they they love to see you there. You know, they really have to just survive in a sense out here yeah figure it out and be creative because 
in America, we just have so much accessible, so many things that are accessible to us that, I mean, you just can't have out here. And uh, so they have to get creative, and I love seeing that aspect of this culture too, and how they do retaining walls, and how they set up food stands, and how they make cafes, and all of that, because it's completely different, and they don't have half the tools that we have, or supplies, or anything like that. So the ways that they have to do things have inspired me in a sense as well, for sure. Um, like all of these street uh, sewers and how water flows through the streets, it's, it's, everything is just completely different. It's, it's very makeshift in a way, um, but they make it work and they, they make use of what they have. And it's, it's, it's a bit inspiring and eye-opening for sure when you look around because it's, it's very you know, poverty-centric. It's, um, you know, they don't have much, but they make what they have work. And it's, it's pretty cool to see. Yeah. One of the, the other things that we, we got to do, we <clears throat> are both pretty into you know, trying to be as healthy as we can and, and, and putting you know, exercise you know, forward in a sense. Um, but we got to, we ended up in Phuket, which is Southern Thailand, and we got to train and, and you know, work amongst and learn Muay Thai. And Muay Thai is so huge here. Like people and kids and, and, and like children grow up on um, you know, you need to learn this because this is how you're going to make your living. You're going to try to, you know, be a master of your craft at Muay Thai and, and, and to train. And, and to, there's so many gyms around here, as you can see behind me, like this is a, an old gym that got, you know, washed out because of COVID. Um, it's, it's very run down now, but um, there's gyms, you know, every mile there's a, a Muay Thai gym or a boxing gym. And we we got to learn that culture and train amongst, you know, some of the best um, in the world. Uh, Tiger Muay Thai is a MMA training fitness camp um, where, you know, high level athletes come and train and, and, and even work out, do CrossFit or do, you know, running. They have running coaches, they have um, ice baths, um, they have um, top of the elite athletes in the UFC that come here just to train, um, just to get their mind right, to eat healthy. Um, they have a huge cafe where it's just so accessible um, to, so you, this know, is the ice bath. you know, eat like super, super it clean. Um, so we kind of broke up our trip and I'm so happy that we did because we took like five, six days to just work out and to eat healthy and, and to, to read and I spent some time working on the business and um, that was a good break in our trip. I'm really happy that we did that. It was good. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The, uh, I was so excited for that, too, just because of the level of training. Like you said, the people that are there, uh, Rafael Fazeev brushed right past me. Uh, he's a, light, or a middleweight contender right now in the UFC, just an animal. And these are people that you're just surrounded with. You're not just surrounded by people like that, but Russians of, of crazy styles and skills. And, and it's really, really amazing. Um, the level of trainers there is another thing. These guys have trained the highest of level of Muay Thai fighters, UFC fighters, um, all of it. So, so you get to learn from that, and I think it's really, really motivational. And, and yeah. Yeah, and there's definitely two sides to people coming out here versus versus where they're from. Like, I think we, I could count on one hand how many times we like went out, or mm. you know, like if if we have a beer. Um, it's been very seldom because that's not what we really came out here to do at all. Um, and, and we really dispersed ourselves from different groups and, you know, we're going to wake up and go on a run in the morning because that's kind of what we want to do. Or we're going to, you know, make time for the gym or eat, eat healthy and, and just kind of get our mind right. And that mm -hmm. has been so influential and, and surrounding yourselves by, you know, people that are doing the same thing. Um, in a crazy culture has been very eye-opening in that sense. Yeah, I felt, I felt that feeling a lot at the gym as well. Just a lot of like-minded people in that sense of, of fitness. And like you said, uh, kids, when they're really young, seven, eight, they start fighting to bring income in for themselves and family, typically until they're about 25, and then they figure out what they're going to do the rest of their lives. But a lot like uh, wrestling back home, it's not... It's not a punishment to get into Muay Thai. It's it's teaching of discipline, 
and, and just how to, how to behave in a sense. And you grow up with that discipline and they're the most respectful kids you've ever seen. Like when I went into that Muay Thai gym, the uh, beginner stages, they had 17 year olds, 18 year olds with 200 plus fights. And you kind of look at them and you're like, what are you capable of? Because you can't tell. You can't tell that they're actually animals. But by like your second or third day, you see them hit some pads or a bag or something and you're like, wow that is talent like you can tell these kids have been doing it since a very very young age and at a very very high level and it's 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 helped me fall into that culture of muay thai because they when you're training they look at you they don't feel bad when you're sweating when you're when your hand hurts from hitting a, a mitt wrong because they've been doing it their whole life it's like a it's like a challenge for them to break you and a challenge for yourself to try and beat that what's that orange orange, orange juice, juice? Yeah, yeah, yeah we are not? getting yep. yeah getting served up orange juice right now. All right, I got it. I got it. One, two. That's okay. That's all right. Thank you. <laughs> like I said, there's a lot of st street vendors and, and just genuinely nice people. Come, come, crap. Thank you. Thank you. Fresh orange juice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and people that don't have street markets or anything to settle down into, they just pretty much load up into a two-wheeled cart and haul around juices or coconut ice cream and all kinds of crazy things that are fun to try too. Yeah, yeah, it's been a crazy experience when just seeing how people make their living out here and, and what they have to kind of go through that. It's like we have no reason to complain back home. Um, and like you were saying before, like you're almost like mad about the things that you would get upset about mm -hmm. back home and almost taking it out on yourself by not even wanting to you know, help someone else out or give a compliment because of how, you know, unhappy with, with what you were doing. Right, you know? right. Yeah, it definitely takes becoming happy yourself to understand that you need to take care of the people around you as well. Um, I, I felt like I abused that for a while, for sure. And just being aware of what's really out there. Um, back home, you get, you know, kind of just surrounded by things that are there for you and built to make your life easier and you don't you don't really think about levels of poverty or third world countries in in that sense so so you get wrapped up into all these things that just grow and grow and grow until you feel like they're just weighing you down and you have so many issues but but those are all just like first world problems and um, this place has opened my mind to that like being embarrassed about things that I would let put me down mm back home whether it was other people or just stuff going on in my own mind too you know yeah i'm sure you can kind of relate to that yeah no for sure like we you get so wound up in your your day-to-day -day or what's bugging you or whatever but you don't really think about what's going on in the same ecosystem that you're in um across the world like people have to go length lengths and bounds to just survive out here in a sense um so just to be i guess more grateful is a biggest takeaway mm -hmm. that that we felt for sure yeah for sure for sure um, we did northern thailand and then <clears throat> we did the south it's like just going from place to place but taking your time um, and and learning the culture in a sense more than just trying to see things uh, has been the best part of it all. Yeah, that's, that's what I expected to do when we came out here was we got six weeks, we're gonna see this place, see this place, see this place, do this and that. And how it changed was so much for the better because it, it just becomes stressful, like you said, packing and unpacking and going to different hostels every three days. And it was hard. So the, the new path that we started where we might start extending stays from place to place and you could really take it all in and, and feel better about it instead of being stressed. And because it was hard to learn that way, I felt um, about the cultures when you were just in and out of the hostels all the time, 
when you're at a place for longer, you can get around more and experience different things with different people and different stands. Yeah, and we've met you know tons of people from all over the world, from Norway to to the UK to Australia, um, and just hearing you know their perspective on on travel or what what they're going through. But the thing is, is that you meet somebody um, in one place, but then you know they're leaving or you're leaving and you're going to the next place and you're meeting somebody else and you're hearing their perspective and what they what their life is like and um it's just opened up our eyes so much on on you know different cultures and different people from different areas and we've made some you know great friends through this too and and i think impacted people um in a way of our of our own and i think we've always operated that way i think what we've really built our friendship on is like just kind of winging it and going through the ups and downs and I'd say we've both dealt with significant loss in our lives at some point whether it's you know losing you know a close one or or going through a hard time on your own personally and you know learning and going through what we've done out here has really you know mended some some broken pieces and also opened up our eyes on how we want to you know live and and do our thing. Yeah I think the Coming here, this trip, the difference in the type of people you'll see, I think, when, when we come back is when I w before I came here, I was questioning if I was capable of happiness anymore. And here, I don't think I'm capable of not being happy anymore, seeing this and, and just how people have grown up here in, in this culture. And it makes you embarrassed of what you used to get frustrated about. Mm. And... Um, you know, you just you just get overall better. I just I wish I could explain this trip in a better sense of growth, but you just feel it. You feel the difference, and I think it's gonna come off, and people will notice the difference. Mm. Um, yeah, it's just I'm so happy now. It's, I I just think that this could be the the healthiest form of of healing and and growing and investing. Just it's overall I think the best thing we could have done for ourselves. And I, I hope that other people get inspired too. And I know people in my family are already inspired because they see, they see a different person already, you know, yeah. and how I speak to them. Mm. And they, they see emotion mm. again. Yeah, you have uh, impressed me in bounds and, and have just become just how you deal with like situations and it's you know I felt like I used to be the strong one in, in certain times but now I feel like <laughs> like you are like you have the the armor um, of, of just a good human being um, and it's it's impressed me and it, it, it humbles me and it makes me a better person because of it yeah we're, we're always we're always bouncing off of each other in that sense because you you hold me up there now and I feel like we're both just right here bouncing off of each other all the time and that's why we're that's why it happens so often that's why we can go out to dinner and just you know be eating all of a sudden go on an hour-long rant about how we feel out right. of nowhere yeah and it yeah it's and it is different and we don't expect people to just come out here like this is a, a mm. don't get me wrong it's a crazy thing right um, it's not normal but but you know, it was on my calendar for like a year and Dalton had, you know, agreed to come with and I was so grateful for that and to kind of grow and do this together and to see, you know, the lowest of the lows here and what people have to go through. Um, it's just, it's, it's made me really happy for, mm -hmm. for what we have back home and, and to embrace that opportunity to just, just try to be a little bit better. There's so much bad going on, um, just even in the news, um, it's just, yeah. Yeah, we're definitely gonna try and bring back a lot of good um, as far as Thai cooking night and just like crazy little things that we wanna get our friends into just to give them a little bit of an experience too, I think, and just so they can relate to us and, and where we're at and what we learn from it. Not that people have to be inspired to come here, but for people to just understand what it did to us and that getting out of the States is actually a very, very, it's a hard growing process. It's, it's scary, but things that are scary to do um, are the best for you, I think. Yeah, yeah, like I said, we just won it and, and came out here and did it. And um, yeah, I'm just so proud of you for doing that.
Yeah, thank you. And yeah, because <laughs> two years ago, I mean, I wouldn't have been speaking like this right. at all. Yeah. Maybe my whole, I would say my whole life, you know, I didn't, yeah. I didn't learn how to speak with emotion. Yeah. Yeah. And how you handle yourself and, and, and your family. And, and we miss our family. Don't get me wrong. Like it's, it's not easy being across the world and, and feeling, you know, detached and being 13 hours ahead of, you know, our day-to-day -day lives. Um, but this is something that has allowed us to grow a lot as, as people, um, and, and in business and in, um, our personal lives and to, you know, get a little bit of a, a clarity shift and perspective shift um, just to, you know, just prepare for, for our lives, I guess. Yeah. You know? Yep. One of the, the main things too, with that was pretty inevitable is like coming out here, you really leave everything at the door. Like there's obviously so much less distraction than when you're at home, just trying to play, you know, keep up or live to your day to day or make sure that you go to the gym or make sure that you you eat a good dinner or you cook for yourself. And, and when you come here, um, there's really no masking your problems. There's really no, uh, it's, it's you versus the world and, and you almost get like a survival instinct in a way. You're just trying to, trying to figure it out, you know? Yeah, I think, I think back home you try to instill things that better your day or maybe make it easier for me personally. Like, uh, if I was unhappy, I just wanted to work more. I wanted to work more or I would start cooking or I would start doing things that kind of made me happy, you know, to keep my mind off of things I didn't want to think about. And I thought it was good for me because I was getting through my days. Mm -hmm. I was, I was taking a, it's, it felt like I was taking a step forward every day. And then, uh, coming here, it's like taking that mask off. You take all of your distractions away, work family, cooking, exercise, not, not, not necessarily taking away exercise, but we're still working hard out here and we're still doing the things that we love to do, but from a different point of view, it's, it's really eye-opening here as well. Yeah, and like coming out here, we just, you know, wanted to work on ourselves and also like initiate positive habits that we want to instill in ourselves and carry on back home. Um, and when you get, you leave all that at the door, it makes it you know, a hell of a lot easier to just kind of work on yourself. And that's kind of one of the bigger pillars of what we wanted to come out here for. We didn't want to come out to just drink or to party or any of that. I mean, I can count on one hand the amount of times we went out since being here. Mm. Um, but other than that, we've been in bed at by 10 o'clock <laughs> and up at 6.30. And yep. everyone else is, you know, whether they're 40 or 25 or whatever, they're sleeping in till, till noon and it's just it's just different so i think we came out here with you know positive intentions and to immerse ourselves in the culture but also to grow as people i'm ready to start giving back to people around me because i know that when i came here and all of my distractions were stripped away from me i knew i, I gained a better understanding of happiness obviously but i understand it better that people in my very close circle of family and friends are also we're also doing the same thing and I would like to start giving back to people in that sense that might think they're happy because you know people always they lash out in small ways big ways everybody has their thing that they does that they do and um, you, you, that's when you know that okay we're not that different you just mask it and everyone goes through their own you know their own battles or their own things but the things that you know we've kind of built our friendship on and how we've kind of been very risk adverse and overcome a lot of obstacles is that we've both been through really hard times where we've both dealt with significant loss in our lives and um, to just like man up and to you know figure it out has been like what we do and and to have the opportunity to come to you know such a place where you're getting you know best of both worlds here but also time to work on yourself is you know that's like probably the main thing that we wanted to you know come out here for is to curb winter depression come out here you know affordably it's very you know you can spend the same amount as you would on a cruise or whatever for a week and and you can spend the same amount coming out here for a month it's just a different type of travel and it's just opened our eyes up you know so much and when you say giving back and people back home masking their their problems and their unhappiness um, we just kind of want to be 
positive role models for the future for the people that we surround ourselves with. You know, like we've met people from all over the world out here um, that, you know, have have seen us, you know, move a little differently and, and um, feel, you know, things a little differently. And we've uh, inspired some people out here with how, you know, our goals and, and what we're trying to accomplish because, as I said before, some people come out here just to party. And I think we really took a, a healthy, <laughs> we really took a healthy approach to that and like also instill good habits um, and to bring those back home to surround ourselves and the people around us with those same, you know, moralities in a sense. Um, and, and it's all about just taking action and having the courage to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, like you said, a lot of people that are here, they're here to party. And I think it's just another, another kind of uh, survival instinct to get away from home or a distraction like I was talking about before. And, and you see that. We've, we've had conversations with people that we've really, really touched and uh, kind of gotten through to, in a sense, through our process of self-growth. And they see that, and they uh, they're already starting to take better steps and change their lives because they don't want to they just don't want to fake it anymore. Yeah, you know they just want to be happy. That's and all people really want to be. No, yeah, for sure. And 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 that age range of people that have seen us do our thing um, has ranged from 29 to 39 or to whatever, and they're like, man, like what am I doing? And it's like, yeah, I feel very grateful that we have kind of been through the mud as much as we have so far and, and in our own way. Like we are, we don't hold our battles more worse than anybody else's and, it, and we are so blessed to begin with that it really just gets rid of all that, um, you know, mindset in general of, you know, we have it hard because now seeing this side of the world, I feel like we can take on anything mm -hmm. like there's nothing that we can't get through um we've built our friendship on on getting through hard times and and powering through um and to see how the people you know live out here um, and see what they go through has just been so inspiring for how we want to treat um, people back home and and coming here and releasing those distractions and kind of getting that mindset shift on what we want to do is is all we want to do is yeah. just you know bring back the good it's really really eye-opening and the awareness of of happiness and how to get to that point now it seems clear mm. it was the month that we've been here i've learned i feel like more about myself than than ever before you know i feel like the last two years of my life wasn't even me mm. i don't know who that guy was mm. you know <laughs> that's crazy because i <laughs> see it man yeah. Yeah. No, me too. And, and, to you know, we get, you know, Snapchat memories or whatever, like from years ago and to see how we've grown and to continue to take positive action. Um, like it, it's just, it's just made for more clarity on, on our goals and our, our mission and how we want to surround ourselves with and, and who, and also, um, we don't mean for it to be just about happiness or whatever but i think that's what we have gotten most out of this is like really 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 doing the self work and the thought and and the process when you get rid of those distractions and you have nothing else to focus on besides yourself and definitely being opened up to how people go through their battles all the way across the world has made us just like what do we have to be upset about um there's a quote by a uh, a famous athlete, Kamara Usman, and he said, if you, if everybody threw their problems in a pile, you would take yours and run away. And, and this has been eye opening and, and perspective shifting in that sense too. It's like, what do we have to complain about? Like, just put your head down, do your thing and figure out what works for you. And I think instilling what we've learned here and bringing that back home to you know curb your anxiety or curb your um, what bothers you and and doing it in a, in a positive healthy way um, is the best thing for you in in terms of 
what's going to get you through your day to day or what's going to, you know, make you happier every day or what's, you know, what's going to make the people around you happy. Um, how can I be nicer? Um, how can I give back or, or whatever it may be? Um, being just seeing this side of the world has definitely just opened that whole pathway up that you wouldn't see back home when you stay, stay in the same place for so long you see the same thing for so long you know day, like and, and and you get surrounded by that and and it's not easy to take a week off or, or take a day off or whatever um but but there are other things that you can do to to work towards that um and and there are ways to to um provide good for for the world or for yourself because in the end all that really matters is what fulfills you inside or what makes you happy and how you move throughout throughout the world and um, I'm just so proud of how far we've come or <laughs> like it's like we're 24 and blessed to do this um, but but it wouldn't have came without taking positive action to get here so if we can kind of just talk about it a bit um, and and to, to to try to get it out to the world in a sense in our own way because this is how we want to express our feelings about it um, because it is abnormal like mm -hmm. i i would never expected you to come along um and and for you to do so i'm just so so proud to even know you or be your friend at the slightest to to be a, your best friend and to go through it together has been uplifting and i feel like iron sharpens iron and if you surround yourself by good people and and you, and you work hard everything should should fall into place yeah, yeah, I love that. Like <laughs> nice. But just being out here has just been a, a, gr a great perspective shift and, and to see the lowest of the lows and, 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 and to, to kind of go through it in a sense and to immerse ourselves in, in the culture um, has just, it's just been overall a growing, a growing experience and something that I'm thankful for and something that we both want to carry on for our day-to-day -day lives going into the new year mm -hmm. and I think we both get pretty depressed seasonally um, that you know may not affect everyone or it may affect people in different ways um, yeah we're just more or less instilling uh, happiness now happy things to do instead of distractions like uh, just working overtime you know that'll get me through the day instead now we would like to do just crazy things like ice baths like let's put an ice bath in our backyard now and let's just you know we can work out in the morning and then just destroy our bodies right in the ice bath after that yeah and we've the everyone knows or you've probably seen the the, the benefits of an ice bath or whatever and we got to experience that firsthand like a real ice bath so with ice, chunks, ice bath. and i'll throw a video clip up of it us doing it um but yeah we we did it for you know days straight you know religiously so, and yeah. just the way that we felt after it and, and eating clean and it's it's like that is like a superpower in its own so like why not bring that back home um and and just you know force yourself to feel good why would you not force yourself to feel good um and it's it, it all it takes is you know little steps you know one by one it's i don't it, it'd be hard to just jump in an ice bath if you've never done it before um and you've done it for the first time. I told you, yeah, I told you my first time was the biggest, it feels as if it was the biggest mental struggle I've had in, in years to, I remember getting in, I, Bailey gets in and he's all calm, cool, and collective, and I was like, <laughs> cool, me too, right? And I get in and I'm just, Bailey's breathing fine, and I'm like, just trying to figure it out. I'm just trying to focus, there's a guy talking to me, and I was like, my mental game, it was, it was collapsing. And he was like, all right, you ready to dunk your head underwater? I was like, yep. And I barely got my face in, and my mind just said no. There was, there was such a mental barrier there that frustrated me that I had to come back. I had to come back. And the craziest part was that the next time we came back was right after they put ice in. It was cold. It was probably all of 10 to 15 degrees colder than it was the day before. And I told myself, I have to beat this thing. I just have to. I have to conquer this part of my journey here and that's where just mental growth really comes into the aspect of being here and what's accessible to you because I got in and we killed it we were in for four minutes I dunked my head came up breathing was solid 
and we stayed in for another 30. Went to a sauna, came back for another two minutes, and I was like, the, the mental relief that that gave me after I beat it, I just wanted more. I wanted to keep doing it and being better for myself. Yeah, yeah, and like the clarity and how you feel is just instrumental. It's crazy. So like that's something that we really want to bring back, and it is... I don't know, maybe it's abnormal to a lot of people, but um, I mean, you look at you know, anybody that talks about it or that does it or practices it, it if, if you do it, it's, it's probably going to help you out a bit. So I, I, we've, we've felt it firsthand, like a real experience, so we're going we're gonna to bring that back home and, and start doing that too, which is maybe a bit crazy, but it's, it, it, it's good for you. So. Another positive aspect to put in, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've just learned so much. We've met so many different people from all over the world, and... And to hear, you know, you know what they think of America, and and to 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 learn about where they're from and what their jobs are, and how they go to university, or how they have um, more accessibility to to travel, or it's more influenced. Um, it really opens up your eyes on on, you know, I. I we love America. I, I wouldn't mm-hmm. put that down in any any way, but but we are very closed. Country, like in a country sense, like you only hear about bad American news in America. Um, you don't hear anything good, and and being so detached and, and out here, these people from all over the world know all of the bad things that are going on all around the world, or the good things, um, and and about America. But we know nothing about what's going on in Australia. We know nothing about what's going on. In, in the UK, and maybe we don't need to, but it's the fact that we're not even exposed to it. We're just fed all the bad things, and we know, you know, everyone knows this by now, and it's it's a bit sad, um, but to, to see what other people think of America and to see their perspective, um, it's it's been interesting because it's it's been a little fun game for us that we were like, so what do you think of America? Like, yeah. what what is your perspective? And and it can you know rub off as like uh like eh. or it can rub off on like it's it's a dreamland and we've seen both sides and both both perspectives on um what people think and it's it's been a fun a fun little thing that we've been doing <laughs> people are definitely very curious of the freedoms that we have uh a lot of the UK people we've spoken with you know they can't just take a side by side out for fun Mm. you know we've talked to kids that have dirt bikes though and what they have to do to have fun is they have to go find a farm somewhere way out of town and you know do a little trespassing and hopefully you can get away from the cops when they're called that's the accessibility version of like wisconsin is that you can just take your four-wheeler right down the road and you know if that's what you want to do for fun you can do it you can do it yeah yeah one people uh person from the uk they were saying like or i don't know if it was the uk in general but they were saying if they you know, rode a bike on the streets or whatever, like they would, the, the cops would just take your bike away. So it's like, it, it's a thousand dollar risk on just, you know, yeah. ripping a motorcycle or whatever mm-hmm. you want to do, you know? Yep. Yep. So it's been, it's been interesting learning about what people think of America and, um, yeah, just kind of going through all the leaps and bounds and finding just mental clarity and, um, where our goals and passions lie and, and, we we do miss home like it is very abnormal to be gone for this long um but it was something that you know seemed a bit different and it seemed uh more good than bad and something that we just said you know screw it let's just go for it and we Mm -hmm. really did wing it like we we've been winging it and (laughs) and i think uh it's probably the best investment we've ever made yeah, I feel that um, that disconnect from home really heavily in my heart now because this, this trip wasn't just for me. It was uh, also for people around me because I want to treat people better and I want to get the people around me taken care of. But uh, being here, my nephew Emmett, he's uh, seven months old now. It's hard to see him. When I left, he wasn't able to crawl yet. He was, you know, just starting to use his voice some more. And in the past month I've seen him crawling all over the place and now he can't stop moving and I FaceTime and he's growling at the phone so it's it is hard it's not always uh sunshines and and rainbows out here um we still get stress factors and we hit ruts and I feel like the biggest part of this trip is that we're figuring out how to conquer those that that adversity in a positive way in a positive manner Yeah. yeah yeah instead of some negative coping mechanism for me personally that's all I had 
That's yeah. All, that's all I had and to fall back on. And it's easy to resort to that. And I, I do it too, like, you know, some sort of negative coping mechanism to to curb whatever you're going mm-hmm. through is common worldwide. I mean, mental illness has become more and more profound and, and, and I'm more and more talked about, which is um, something that we're kind of passionate about too, mm-hmm. kind of going through our battles and ups and downs and everyone's life is different, but, you know, we don't hold that against anybody, but the things that we've had to maneuver together or on our own have been, you know, not always easy. Um, and uh, this has, you know, instilled a lot of positive ways to, to look at things and a lot of um, positive habits or attribu- tribulations that we want to, you know, use in our day-to-day lives to, you know, to get through that or to, to treat somebody a bit uh, better or to, to go about a, a situation a bit differently. Um, and, and, and being disciplined on that, too, is, is something that, I think we need to do and have to do um, in order for ourselves to feel better and to to get through you know whatever it is but but it's all about what works for you and making making yourself happy you know it's 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 not easy and 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 this is something that I think that will be life changing for us for for many years to come and and it'll be something we look back on to to remember and to you know get us back into the right mindset and the right, um, you know, awareness on what you're doing, you know? Yeah. Physically and mentally. I got mm. two tattoos out here now that I won't be able to forget Thailand about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. 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 Yeah. It's been, it's been a fun journey. It, it, like Dalton said, it's not been, you know, it, 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 I can't say that it's not a vacation in a sense because that, you know, it is in a way, but also it's it's more than just that, and and it hasn't been all that easy than just going and plopping on a resort for a week and you know drinking mai tais all day, um, you know that's a different form of travel. But this has been you know something that we've wanted to do for ourselves and and something that you know will help us grow as people and and we hope to you know in, inspire somebody or you know be a good friend to somebody in the future and. Um, I think we've just really grown on that and, and stuck, stuck to that for many, many years is, is to try to live to inspire in a way, but also um, to sh- try to be a, a good person as much as you can be. Yeah, yeah I think making impressions on people and putting other people first um, is kind of a big part of that too. You know, when you're, when you're not... When you're not um, at the place you want to be in happiness, it's hard to do that for others in a positive manner. And I'm, I feel like we can really do that now after this trip. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, anything else we should hit on when it comes to like general culture or safety? Um, um, yeah, safety was never an issue. Yeah, we felt pretty like angsty and like like traveling with camera gear is kind of its own difficulty and also just general safety on coming to a third world country. Um, but we've felt so safe here. Everyone is so nice and so welcoming and everyone has their own things that they're doing. They're, they're not really out to get you for any yeah. reason. Yeah. And even back home, if you go to Chicago or, or wherever, you know, even like hometown in a sense, you know, there are like, you know, there can be dangers or, or hit points here and there that you have to, be conscious of but out here there's you know i haven't really run into anything like that Mm -mm. there isn't like you know gangy type related that that we've seen where we've been um yeah i just yeah i haven't felt like anyone's gonna out to get me or Mm -mm. take or steal or anything i feel like i'm a bigger danger to myself with losing my own properties than anything <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah trying to keep everything together and with one backpack and five five shirts and two pairs of pants um it, it's it you just kind of have to figure it out out here but you can get anything that you want um laundry here you just kind of drop off your laundry and 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 you come pick it up and it's very cheap and that's kind of how you do the whole backpacking thing mm-hmm. so it's definitely been a learning experience for us and if we were to come back or, or do something in a different country or something in the future um, we would definitely be more prepared on, on how this whole thing works because yeah. it's been a learning experience yeah and it just I mean everything <laughs> everything language barriers uh, miles to kilometers and meters and now we have kilograms and it's like 
everybody here understands those and we're like yeah it's like a mile or two from here and they're like how many kilograms or like how many kilometers is that it's that's another added factor to everything out here that just like difficulties and things you got to prosper and get through and and learn yeah i've actually en- enjoyed learning that yeah that there's just it. it's just been constant learning and yeah. constant uh self battle and self awareness and um just seeing a different side of the world has inspired us to to be better it's inspired us to work a little harder or to give back a little more and and I think we've always tried to do that, and, and I think we've done a pretty good job of it so far. And uh, to get a little reset and to bounce back a little bit um, is kind of what we were going for, and I think that's kind of what we've accomplished is like, let's, you know, let's get back home, let's, let's get to work, let's put our head down, let's you know, treat the people around us with you know, respect and, and, and treat them well, and um, yeah, just go about our day-to-day lives, but you know, come back a bit happier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's easily the biggest difference in a trip to a resort for a week where, you know, you want to stay longer, you want to hang out, chill on the beach, sip on a martini for a while longer, whereas here we've learned so much and we're ready to get back home and get back to work and start inspiring people and having different effects on people. Mm. Yeah, I love that. Like, yeah, and like he said about the resort stuff, like we have to catch a ferry to our next location in an hour and a half and we're just yeah we're just going to be going to the next spot and it's just like constant pick up move pick up move and and you you can settle into a spot for a little bit longer if you want um but you have the opportunity to go to the next spot so when you get bored of you know a location um or you know you whatever it is you want to pick up and leave it's it's pretty easy to just you know you you basically book a bus on this app um called 12 go asia and it's like this uh Asia database of flights and buses and ferries and taxis um, and it's very affordable and you just kind of whenever you want to pick up and move you pick up and move and uh, you go see the next thing and, and along those those paths um, th- throughout this country there's just little you know little nuggets or little um, self-awareness tactics or um, hurdles that you have to go through um, I thought I lost my bag on a on a bus we were leaving where were we leaving we were leaving bangkok bangkok oh yeah bangkok yeah we were taking a 12-hour bus to to shang mai north and you put your 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 bag underneath um the bus and i had like all my expensive stuff in there and i had a air tag in there so i thought and so after we were leaving um camera died on us for a second but as we were leaving uh bangkok i thought i had my you know bag in the underneath the 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 bus that we were taking and um my air tag was saying that my bag was like somewhere else and i was like freaking out reading up on forums like is it safe to take a bus from here to here and some of the things i was seeing was that you know some of the workers may um like just take your bag off and and you know depending if that if that's their depiction of what they want to do or not. And I thought it happened to me. So we were on this bus, like I was freaking out. And um, so we ended up stopping and, and tr- I was trying to talk to the Thai bus driver and I couldn't communicate with him well. And it was really, really stressful because I thought everything was being stolen. <laughs> and this was like right when we were in Bangkok and uh, this was already stressful enough. And, um, but my air tag must've just fell out, you know, somewhere from my bag because my bag was underneath as we stopped eventually. Um, but that was just a crazy thing. Yeah. That was like, like you said, our, our mentality was in a different spot leaving Bangkok because we didn't get to understand the culture yet. We didn't know how nice people were. We, we didn't get to feel that part. So it was still high intensity, it felt like. And like this, this 12-hour night bus, we didn't know what to expect for people to be on there or any of that. And we were like 45 minutes away from the bus station when you found your air tag was all the way back over there too. Yeah. So that was, it like hit me in the chest and I was like, oh my God, what are we, what yeah. are we going to do? Yeah. We were already really stressed out in Bangkok. It was too busy for us. We didn't even know what we were doing yet. Really. We were just trust trying to figure it out and, and going through that adversity really, you just kind of harden up a bit. And mm-hmm. um, that's just one little small blip of, of highs and lows it hasn't been all all uh lavish as as it looks on on photos for sure yeah yeah no doubt 
So, um, yeah, this show, this podcast is something that we want to continue to do um, and bring it back home. And we just want to get our thoughts out there and talk about what we're doing. Um, and we both have a exciting year ahead of us. So we wanted to take this trip to kind of reset and get, you know, get our minds right and ready to, ready to rock. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, we're just really excited. But we, we miss our friends and family dearly it's not easy being across the world and um it's it's just not not easy at all Mm -hmm. um so this is something that we you know really did for ourselves and uh to learn and grow and to just do it because if you if you don't do it you're not going to do it so i think just you know taking you know positive action and and trying to instill good in anything that you do is it's kind of what we're, we're all about in a way. Yeah, what our goal was, certainly, for sure. So, cool. Cool. Well, <laughs> yeah, we're in, we're in Thailand right now. Uh, our horse friend has, has left um, in search of food, maybe. And, uh, yeah, we'll be home shortly. And we uh, just wanted to connect with everyone back home and kind of talk about our adventure so far. It's been... It's been a wild ride. We've seen amazing things. We've met amazing people. Um, we've instilled positive and good traits and habits, and we hope to bring that home and and to have a, a great year. So if you're listening to this, um, this is a show that we kind of want to continue to do and uh, just talk. And, you know, if you're listening, we appreciate it. Yeah, awesome. I Thank think. you so much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. All right, so I'm gonna to try to hit one of my one of the craziest shot opportunities. So we got the sunset there, and this freaking insane limestone rock. So I'm gonna to try to get over there and get this sunset in the background. It's gonna be a mission. Let's get it. Oh shit! Oh, the wind's picking up. Fuck. Oh, why did you not like the banana? <laughs> oh, he doesn't like that banana. This is your sign to start chasing your dream. <laughs> called Maya Bay, I believe, where we're getting close to Maya Bay. But we are watching the sunrise in one of the craziest places. That just looks nuts. He's coming for you. <laughs> awesome. Well, we're not staying here today. Yeah, we're not staying here. Oh, sure. Just you just came back. Yeah, Let you get out. Yeah. The yeah. bag doesn't pick up. <laughs> <laughs> But like to be scared of a giant, giant creature, and then to realize that they're probably the most gentle, caring creature. Saudi crop dongdi. Yes, sir. 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 Y